Today we are proud to award the PDM Diploma, a professional doctorate in engineering, to 18 trainees from the User System Interaction Designers Program. Before the ceremony begins, let me first briefly explain the protocol. First, each supervisor from university or industry will address their graduate and briefly summarize the project. Then the graduate will receive the diploma and the alumnus gift that you see already on the table here offered by TUE. Because as of today, these graduates are official alumni of Eindhoven University of Technology. TUE wants to give her graduates an alumnus gift that expresses pride to be from TU Eindhoven. This gift, a clean cut designed tube for your PDN diploma, is inspired by the eye catching red slash in the TUE logo. Once all of our graduates have received their diploma, the speakers and graduates will have a picture taken. Afterwards, we will join you in the Voorhof where we conclude the ceremony with a reception where there is the opportunity to celebrate and socialize and drinks will be served. Now it's my duty to announce the first candidate. And the first candidate is, let me see where I have the list. I suppose it's here. First uh, candidate is uh, Ms. Evie Ansems, and the speaker is Peter Peters. Please come to the front. Okay. Um, dear Evie, dear family members and supporters of Evie, welcome. Um, I had an uh, afternoon of searching because we didn't meet the first time for the PhD program. We met before um, when you studied industrial design and I couldn't find anything back. What I could remember is that you did a good job then, as you did now, and I will come back to that. Um, so I was sort of surprised to see you uh, coming to my desk when you started this uh, um, last half year. Um, and also pleasantly surprised. So your work was in, in the European Union uh, Horizon 2020 uh, funded Do Change program, which is about cardiac patients and how to improve their um, life, change their behavior, um, to live a, a healthier life. And we specifically asked you to do something to visualize um, all the data that comes in from them and to make clear for them how they are doing. So that was sort of the start of your uh, project, and um, that was also the end of your project. Um, but that was all the description there was. So you had to find your way in the project and find out things, go to uh, people involved, like the patients and the doctors and the researchers and the experts and the industry and whatever. So you did all those things and you did them very well. Um, so I'd like to congratulate you with that. Um, and I actually, uh, now I need a piece of paper because I wrote a piece of feedback for you. And I think that sort of sums up um, what I thought of you and what I still think of you as well. I'll put it down here. I have to read sometimes because I don't remember what I wrote. No, that's not true. Okay, so um, it says, and I, you had it in your report as well. Um, during the project and in the regular meetings we had, I experienced AV as being conscientious and hardworking, and you are. She's good in planning her activities and does as she promises, which is a good um, trait as well. And she's very open and honest and takes good notice of suggestions and critique. And as a coach, that is very nice. Um, Avi is also critical and weighs the value of the suggestions you do and the critique she gets, and she does not shy away from discussing things if she does not agree. Um, but always with great respect. As a supervisor, I had an easy task. It felt more like regular talks and discussions with a coworker, um, giving some opinions and hints now and then on the work that needed to be done or the direction to be taken. Um, so this gives a nice uh, indication of the high level that AV actually operates on. 
Um, furthermore, as a person, um, she's very pleasant to work with, and she gives people the feeling of being valued and respected. So, as a person, but especially as a designer, that's an extremely positive characteristic that will you get, get you very far. So that was the end of the quote, so I will close this. Um, so I would like actually to, to close off with that, congratulate you. Um, if there's industry in the room, hire her, <laughs> right? Okay, congratulations. The next candidate is Yunqing Bao, and she will be addressed by myself. <laughs> Hi, Yunqing. Hi, Bao. I never knew right whether I should say Bao or Yunqing because, but I suppose most people address you by Bao, right? Yep. Yeah, so you came to uh, the Netherlands uh, from, uh, with a Bachelor in Electrical Engineering uh, from Shanghai Maritime University. And then you uh, already did your last year of the Bachelor at Fontys. Then you moved to the University, did the Master in Human Technology Interaction, and then joined UZI. I think this is a quite typical path that we see people from technology background that, that feel an affinity with people and want, do not only want to work in a technical area, but want to connect it to working with people and doing something for society. Well, of course, we already met in the first year in modules and so on and had a pleasant interaction, but uh, then our interaction became more intense in the context of the project. And you started working on a project with uh, Philips on uh, mother and child care. And your responsibility was to integrate two different apps that Philips was working on. One in order to uh, help uh, young parents to keep track of the development of their child, the Ugro app, and another one helping women in labor to, to deal with the challenges uh, that uh, labor brings onto women. So for instance, by helping them apply certain breathing techniques and so on. And yeah, that was a project. Um, and what I should say also is that, uh, well, you experienced what it means to work in a company. Certain changes while you are working on a project. The question is, is that budget of your project? Then being reallocated uh, uh, to other projects. So even you was put on hold for a week or for two weeks because it was unclear what was going to happen. And uh, yeah, that was not a pleasant situation. But if I look at your website, I see that if I want to contact you, I have to send a message at smile at yunxingbao.com. <laughs> and I think that characterizes you very well. So despite all the challenges that you had, you were always a cheerful person. Of course, I could not really look into you how you were hurt by the environment. I don't know by the context. I suppose there were some questions that you had yourself, but to me, at least, you always were a cheerful person. And I think that also applied to the people in Philips, so they enjoyed very much working with you together, so you have excellent communicative skills. You delivered in the time that was available to you because your project did not start on, September, on January 1st, but only basically on March 1st, so a relatively short time. I think you did some very useful work that provides a good basis for Philips to work on this. So I would like to congratulate you on the uh, achievement that you made, also congratulate your family, and would like to hand over the diploma. So give Yunqing an applause.
The next candidate is uh, Ms. Emanuela Codicettini, uh, and she will be addressed by Heini Windhagen of Mirabeau. Emanuela. About 25 years ago, in this very same room, the Blaue Saal, I uh, received my degree of electrical engineering here in Eindhoven. And I remember very vividly that it was a very exciting moment and how proud I was to be able to celebrate this with my family and my friends. So I'm quite, quite sure that you feel the same way right now. And I see a very proud and dedicated woman in front of me who has worked very hard and dedicated, not just on the thesis, but also in applying it in her daily job. So I admire that very much. And the subject you have chosen for your thesis is very applicable to our current world, full of technological innovations. Uh, we are all faced with a constant stream of new technology uh, possibilities, and it turns out that applying them to real-world situations is not as easy as it seems. In many cases, technology is assumed to be the answer to um, uh, is, is assumed to be the answer, while the underlying human context and human needs are not fully identified and are not taken into account. And with your study, you have been able to study the effects of this close involvement of end users during the design stage of these concepts. And I feel that's a very important step in applying technology for what it's supposed to be, helping us as people to get further in life. And um, your work builds upon the, the work of many others, uh, most notably Christian Matzberg uh, and his sense-making sense methodology. Uh, yesterday posed a unique possibility to meet him, but unfortunately he got sick with pneumonia and he wasn't able to join us in Amsterdam. But I'm quite sure you will get an opportunity soon to meet him as, as Christian is part of our group of companies and we will definitely make sure you meet up. One detail which I think is unique for Emanuela is that uh, not so many people can claim that they are able to reference the work of their boyfriend in their academic study. <laughs> Emanuela's boyfriend, Lennart, is a graduate of this study as well, and he was here in this room one year ago to receive his graduate degree. And the unique situation doesn't end there, because both of them are working for the same company, our company, Mirabeau and they work together very closely uh, to improve user and uh, end user experiences for well-known brands you all know, like KLM, Transavia, Friesland Campina. I would like to congratulate you on achieving this milestone in your career and also in your professional life. Um, it must be a joy for you to have your family here and to celebrate this together with you. Uh, and speaking for many colleagues at Mirabeau, we are very proud that we've been able to facilitate this milestone for you, and it ho we hope that it will be a foundation for the next, career, next years in your career. Congratulations. There you go. And the official document, let's see if it, if it fits. It's you. <laughs> The next candidate is Debarga, Debargo, I should say, Day. So, and he will be addressed by the supervisor, which happens to be me. Hello, Debargo. It took me some time to uh, get uh, used to saying Debargo rather than Debarga. Also, a special word of uh, hello to your family uh, in the US, right? Um, yeah, so you came to Eindhoven with, uh, after having done a, a Bachelor of uh, Technology from West Bengal University, where you obtained the most diligent, diligent student award. Then you moved to computer science at Vanderbilt University, which is often called the Harvard of the South of the US, so a very prestigious university. And then you joined the UZI program. 
Um, yeah, a bit the same. So starting uh, in the technology program, then feeling strong affinity to people, uh, feeling a need also to do th uh, things for society. So again, a typical uh, Uzi career. Uh, and yeah, uh, we of course then already met in the first year. Uh, also in the first year, you already mentioned that you had a strong interest in automotive. And since I happened to work in the automotive area, that was a natural match. And then fortunately, there was a vacancy available in a department in a project that was sponsored by uh, Stichting Technische Wetenschappen, together with uh, people in Twente, and a large number of other factors, but we work mostly together with the people in Twente. And, well, of course, we opened the, uh, the vacancy to the whole world, but yeah, we agreed that you would give your motivation, your already existing knowledge of the field, and your interest and your background to, the, to be the best candidate of, uh, for this uh, project. So we hired you, and uh, so we have these kind of projects where people, instead of doing a work in industry, do a project as the first part of their PhD uh, project. So you started to work on this project, and yeah, I must say from the first day on, it has been a very pleasant way to work together. So yeah, the topic of the research is uh, related to self-driving vehicles, and I suppose uh, most of you have heard from the media that there is a lot of work now on vehicles who can drive themselves, so that if we are tired, the vehicle can drive for us, or if you want to do other things, or if you get drunk in the pub and want to get home, that the vehicle drives us home. And so one of the questions that these uh, vehicles raise is, well, how are they going to deal with other road users? So if we drive around in our own vehicles, we interact with other road users, and how are these vehicles going to do that? How are they going to signal, to communicate with the people out there? And that was the challenge for you. And, well, to cut a long story short, uh, you already uh, were very uh, productive. So uh, you first went to uh, Nordicai, where you had a position paper, I think. Uh, then uh, last week there was the OTUI conference, and you had uh, two presentations there, one full paper and one, uh, one uh, position paper or poster. Um, well, uh, do not uh, hold me on that. But so, yeah, you are very productive, and so we are very happy to have you in here. You have strong community, communicative skills, so it's very pleasant to work with you. Other people will confirm that. You are also very creative, so I think about this seat suit that you, uh, uh, that you developed. Imagine the Bargo looking like a vehicle seat chair, so that is something. The picture is not here, but that would be nice to say. So, yeah, let's go forward to uh, the and stand here in three years again. So, congratulations on your diploma. Let me first hand you this, so that you have something to put it in. The next candidate will be Victor Donker, and he will be addressed by the Dean of our department, Professor Brombacher. Hi, Victor. Um, you have a passion for design, and you are a talented entrepreneur, and that has resulted in an unusual combination you did a PDN project in your own company. Um, what Victor did is he worked in the company Usono, where he is one of the co-founders, on a device called Probefix. Now, I will explain to you in a few hands what Probefix is, and I will do that by, by an example. I think many of you in the audience, uh, perhaps not yet in the, uh, with the young graduates, I have experienced a situation where, in a relation, a woman gets pregnant. 
And one of the most impressive moments is when you, for uh, using ultrasound technology, for the first time can see the baby to be. Uh, I remember that uh, 20 years ago, that was really impressive. But this is not the only way that ultrasound is used. It is also used in many, many other uh, medical situations. For example, in cardiac analysis, analysis of muscles, and so on. And it provides a complicated situation because uh, in these prenatal uh, echoes, you have the uh, technologist who spreads some contact gel on the belly of the women and then makes the ultrasound. But if you have to do it for a very long mo uh, period of time, with, for example, cardiac patients, the, may, the patient may move, your hands may get tired, and if you want to do it even in the context of an MRE scanner, you just cannot, as a technician, go in with your hand together with the patient, you have to do something else. And that is why um, Victor came up with the idea of the probe fix, fixing ultrasound probes directly to the human body. For complicated, difficult analysis, even to the level where you want to do it to see muscles when they are moving, for example, with sporters, for example, when they run a half marathon, uh, which is not easy. You have to imagine that an analyst just cannot go uh, with an ultrasound probe for 21 kilometers uh, to see how a muscle is developing. You have done that, and you have made, in this way, uh, ultrasound much more accessible. I'm impressed with the results. But I'm also impressed with the person, Victor Donker. In doing this in your own company, you had to balance a wide range of priorities. Typekeeping, keeping the workload under 100 hours a week, I guess. And um, in this way, you could bring a product much further than is common for the uh, PDN project. You could uh, come to even a patent, medical, CE uh, approval, and I heard even a full sales uh, machine. Um, so I can say it's great working with you. You have a great enthusiasm, and your passion and enthusiasm is always clear. But you're also a very good listener. Um, an example, he has a lot of positive things, but I want to, one, to mention one not so positive thing. There's one thing you don't like. Writing report, you saw it coming. <laughs> and um, when Victor came up with a report and where I said, Victor, we have to go through a major iteration, I felt like disappointing my young puppy dog. You sort of saw, oh. <laughs> but having said that, Victor was a good listener. And after a few days, he came back with a report that was much, much better. And um, so your strength is, learning, listening, and also your very strong perseverance. Let me illustrate that with another, now a very positive example. A few days before his final presentation, Victor sent me a very simple mail. I cannot speak. He was hit by a hockey ball somewhere here, and uh, I do not know how much you can speak today, but that's not an issue today. But for a presentation, it's crucial. But Victor didn't despair. He just found out some voice amplifier. And in, I don't know how he did it, but he gave an excellent preservation. He just pushed through. So um, this combination of enthusiasm, the ability to listen and learn, and strong perseverance, I see a very bright future at a, ahead of you. My guess is this PDN is just a start. Having said this, I want to congratulate you with the degree of professional doctor in engineering. And I first hand over this token to you, Thank you. but the most important, the diploma. Let me check with you whether, whether everything is on it. Victor, well done. The next candidate is Serena Dorstein, and she will be addressed by her uh, university supervisor, which happens to be me again. <laughs> and if you now guess that there is a certain pattern arising, that uh, we will have uh, me talking every second 
a graduate, that's not the case. So you will be the last one that I will talk to. So, Serena, um, you came to Eindhoven uh, first with a Bachelor of Psychology from University of Twente with a minor in Criminology. But it's not the, not the reason why you came to Eindhoven, to our department, because we have very few criminals in our department. <laughs> if not, then it's now the time to speak up, now or never. <laughs> no one, so, well. Uh, in fact, uh, before coming to Eindhoven, after your bachelor, you also did a master at Human Factors and Cognitive Engineering uh, involving a project at TNO Susterberg. So when hiring you, it was clear that there was affinity with what we are doing. Very strong affinity with working for people in a more applied context. Uh, then uh, the UZI project that you did was a project at uh, Bright Cape. And the assignment was basically um, increasing the user experience maturity. So the, the work, the procedures, uh, making sure that uh, the attention for the user in the work of Brightcape, who is a data analytics uh, company, uh, was established in that company. And this is not a very typical uh, project because uh, usually projects are like, okay, do some research, then generate some ideas, do some evaluation, which is already challenging enough. But trying to get a company into accepting uh, user experience is uh, of a different order. Fortunately, of course, you were hired to do that, so there was already awareness that a company should do that. But the question was also how to do that. And so you started working very hard, uh, but at a certain moment uh, you started to wonder a bit, how am I going to translate it into some coherent project description? Because in the end I need to deliver a report. So we had a couple of sessions and we said, well, maybe you first describe uh, the general goal and then say how you could do that for a number of different projects in the company. And that sounds like a very sound idea. And uh, you started working very hard on that. But uh, yeah, um, the reality is tough. So things go much slower than, uh, than you hope for. And in fact, not only reality is tough, but your own body is tough as well. So um, you worked very hard. I heard uh, Arnaud say something about like 120 hours, so I suppose that applied to you as well. And at a certain moment, you even uh, got, I think, overworked and fainted during one of the uh, meetings with clients. So you had to relax for four weeks. So that very strongly, again, affected the work that you could do. In the end, there was one use case that you could really report in your uh, report. But yeah, I think this was exemplary work. And so also, um, uh, Brightcape is very happy about you. You already have a position at Brightcape, so you will continue working there. I think they, uh, um, they can be very happy about you. One other thing that I should mention is that you did not only do the work, you also set up a UX group at Brightcape, so hiring additional people to work with you only at a relatively young age. And if that is not yet enough, then you also started to apply the idea of lifelong learning. So beyond what we already provided to you, you also started to work on UX certification, taking courses from the Nielsen Norman Group to, to further develop. And yeah, I think, well, I'll just stop talking here. So <laughs> congratulations. And then, that's first state hands. Yeah. Yeah. First state hands. Thank you. The next candidate is Kate Gravillo, and she will be addressed by uh, Bart Hengeveld. Hello, Kate. Hi. <laughs> Haven't seen you like this before. 
I didn't mean you there. Yeah. No, there you go. So, dear Kate, so I should tell you that some time ago, uh, in fact, right before Panos started his sabbatical, um, I was in a meeting with him about all your projects. And it turned out that uh, well, there were still some projects that needed a TUE coach. So Panos, in his friendly way, asked me, hey, Bart, are you on the market? So I said, yeah, I'm on the market. And he gave me you. You are also on the market. So, and I have to admit that I didn't really know you that well at the time, or if I'm really honest, I didn't know you at all. Which can be a, a very tricky start to a professional um, collaboration, as you know. Um, anyway, soon after this meeting, we, so you, Nienke, and myself had a meeting of our own, and I got to know you a bit better. We discussed what you like to do, etc., etc. And then at the very end of our meeting, you, you asked me if I could be so kind. So in a very direct, I should say very direct, but very uh, charming way, you asked me if in the future I could be so kind to answer your emails. <laughs> Which I think is, uh, it's very typ typical for you. So you have this very uh, nice combination of uh, really endearing positivism anyone who knows her will acknowledge this, with this raw urge not to waste time. <laughs> so I think that's, uh, I thought I had a good catch there. And these features were also spotted, by the way, by your company coach who pointed this out at your graduation. He was super happy with you, not only for doing a lot of work, because you did a lot of work, but also for bringing all this uh, good energy to the work floor. So at N Double, the company where you work, so for the audience, uh, Kate worked on an applicant tracking system, where you can track applicants systematically. You sometimes, yeah, you know, it cannot be too clear. You sometimes struggled, not so much with the work that you were asked to do, but more that, you know, you felt that you had more to offer as a UX designer. And you wanted to show these people that user experience design is more than just some black art uh, you hand something over to the UX designer, you get something back that is seemingly relevant. And you wanted to show that you could actually generate significant value for the company. So together we thought about several subtle strategies to allow you to, uh, to convince uh, the company and your colleagues. Although I have to admit, I don't know which of all the strategies you actually applied. All of them. Well, I'm quite sure, knowing you, that you, you certainly have made an impact. So next to this hidden agenda, you, you also had a main activity, the reason why you were there, which went smoothly. Uh, I don't think we spend so much time talking about that. Uh, you delivered the professional work that we've grown accustomed to seeing in our Uzi students, so all positive there. But you know, as I told uh, at the start of this um, monologue, I more or less inherited you from a piece of paper, but I can only say that I'm really, really happy to have been handed you. You're a really, really good company, even over Skype, and we met a lot over Skype, while at the same time just doing a good job. So that's really uh, perfect. So what I have learned uh, from this experience is that sometimes you don't need an applicant tracking system to find someone who is good to work with. Sometimes you just need a bit of luck and panels asking you to take care of a student. So I congratulate you on your even more professional life and wish you all the best for the future. I checked your name. The next candidate is Jan Mercurstra, and he will be addressed by Dr. Javed Khan. Dear Yelmar, congratulations. Uh, Hartelijk gefeliciteerd. Thank you. Uh, for your project, uh, you worked in uh, NetApp, a healthcare company based uh, in Enschede. And the product that you worked on is a digital dossier in which healthcare professionals need to record all sorts of uh, patient data. It is both a socially important project, but also a challenging one. 
since the transition of professionals that have worked for years with non-digital artifacts to digital ones uh, can be easily underestimated. Now, to tackle such a challenging transition, user-centered approach is absolutely necessary, I think. And this is exactly what you did very successfully. Among the methods you employed was actually observing healthcare professionals in their workplace with their patients, which was both eye-opening but also personally challenging at times, uh, as uh, you had admitted. The end result of your project is a newly designed uh, digital product ready to be used by a broader range of healthcare professionals uh, here in the Netherlands. You showed ownership, dedication, structure, and a high professional attitude throughout the project. On a personal note, I would like to highlight my appreciation of your gentle and kind character that enables people to easily approach you and collaborate with you, a trait that I find extremely important for human-computer interaction as well. I would also like to commend the growth that you've shown in the UZI program in becoming a professional designer since your background uh, was in psychology. Yelmer, congratulations once more for with, uh, with this wonderful achievement. The next candidate is uh, Ms. Lindsay van der Lans. And she will be addressed by Dr. Duya. Dear Lindsay, it's very happy to see you here. I met Lindsay actually when she was looking for her UC final project coach. She came to me, she said, I'm leaving the country, I'm going to Curacao. But you're not invited. She spent the last nine months to work with Bering Point Carabin as one of the two UX designers in the company to help to redesign the website for better uh, tax services, uh, online services, and sales. It is a very interesting place, a familiar task for all the UC students, I guess must be very easy to do, right? Because you're trained with all the training courses here. The first thing I think as a trained PhD, a PDN candidate, Lindsay knows she needs to get into contact with the end users. But who are the end users? Are they the people, the development team developing this uh, tax service? Are those people from IT managers who have to de make decision to make the purchasing decision? Due to various reasons, Lindsay was not allowed to have direct contact with the user who is supposed to use the service. What do you do? For a company, they are just start to know user experience design. There's, there's a culture shift they have to make. So Lindsay wasn't giving up, so she worked around. She actually decorated the office with post-it. She's trying to let people think and work along with her, reflect on what they do, at right moment, who they are, what the value they are added. And she became very well known locally at Starbucks because she went out to do her user test at Starbucks. Don't mistake us. She wasn't doing the user test with only the tourists. She met IT managers. She met the people who potentially could be the user for this service. So what happened is that with her efforts and and the results, the insights she obtained, the company is changing right now. And she is able to actually test with the real user because the work is continuing. So during the whole project, she used different methods, including you know, the well-known uh, methods that you always use, focus group, workshops, and also Google Analytics. Now she has the solution. I think the company is ready to take it up. The pilot will start soon. So, and I actually received some words from Connie uh, Go, Go, uh, Gostein. She was actually alumni, alumni from our department. She was a master student here. So Connie was saying, oh, they were really happy that, you know, Lindsay is going to stay with them. But she also shared with me some personal secrets that, about the experience she had there. So Connie said, oh, yo, you have to hear about this. Within the first few weeks, 
uh, Lindsay got a very beautiful house and a car. She knew everything about the beach, beaches and dancing venues. So she really settled down very well. And then she's hardworking. She never gave up. She's not shy to put to the boundaries, and she's not afraid of the opposition she's facing. So she said, you know, I'm so happy that we are also personal friends now. I'm so happy the company is keeping her, that we can build up, you know, a real user experience culture in the company together. So I think UC program should be proud, as proud for all the other graduates, proud to see how this program turned an applied cognitive psychologist into a user experience designer. So I think we should be proud of that. And um, after saying all this, I would like to congratulate you, your friends and family here with your degree, and I hope to visit you one day there in the beautiful <laughs> island. Congratulations. The next candidate is Julia Lebedeva, and she will be addressed by Dr. Jun Hu. Okay, I was uh, just told this is for uh, holding the, uh, the diploma later. It's just not something on the put on the table, but you can keep your diploma. It's much better than I got when I was uh, graduating from the UC. We got paper kind of tube. This is, this is metal. It's an improvement. Julia, um, I had always the impression that you had a background in design. Because during the entire project, um, I will tell the project later, our discussions were mostly about materials, graphics, uh, sewing machines, interactions, and users' pregnancy. However, today I was, uh, when I was preparing this speech, I look at your uh, LinkedIn page. Actually, you had background. You have formal training in mathematics and programming. I could have used you better. <laughs> Which explains why you could interact with people from actually those, those people, you know, those people from election engineering about uh, signal processing. Uh, now, the project, you worked on the concepts and uh, prototypes based on pressure sensors from the International Smart Health Lab, which is a, com a collaborative effort uh, between Bobo technology. Bobo means um, academic and profound in Chinese. Um, it's a Chinese company, and TU Enhofen, to explore the possibilities of using pressure sensor technology for pregnancy care. For pregnant women to monitor, that's what you wrote in your report, but I think the better verb should be to feel uh, the baby's heartbeats in home context not in the hospital context. Um, part of the work was done in China. Uh, it was an adventure for you, I guess. Uh, not only how people work there, it's, it's normally you know, working Chinese, they are just like working Dutch, but more how people live there. I still remember the emails and uh, the, uh, the WeChat messages from you about the hotel rooms and especially the bathrooms. But you survived, as we can see today. <laughs> um, actually, you enjoyed the trip uh, from the uh, Facebook pictures that I could see. And you, you came back uh, with uh, actually interesting, very interesting results. We planned some experiments in China because we thought, we thought, not only you, but also me and people from China, the, the uh, company, the process of conducting experiments in Chinese hospitals would be easier than doing that in Dutch hospitals. But we are wrong. 
uh, we all learn the lesson. When it's about hospitals and it's about the, uh, putting sensors around the patients, although pregnancy is not a illness, um, pregnant women are not patients, but they are in hospitals. Uh, the Chinese hospitals are very, very careful and as careful, as strict as Dutch hospitals. We had to face the medical ethical processes. It brought quite some turbulence to the process of your project, um, but you handled it very well. You did not simply stop there and shock, being shocked. You actually um, uh, looked for alternative ways of conducting uh, um, experiments to get feedback and input from um, not only the pregnant woman from China, but also from Holland and, surprisingly, Russia. And pushed the project actively and effectively forward. And the company was very happy with the result. You were a mathematician and a programmer. Don't hide it. Now with this project and with this diploma, you are not only a mathematician and a programmer, but also a professional interaction designer. Congratulations. Then I would like to invite Charlotte Lunting Schurli, and she will be addressed by Professor Mark Kopelos. Hi, Charlotte. So, long before I met you, I kept hearing your name. Charlotte this and Charlotte the other. You were at the time working at Philips, and you were doing sleep quality monitoring. And uh, yeah, sleep is nice, uh, but doing sleep research is quite tough, especially when you do measurements night in, night out, and uh, you were doing polysomnography data collection, and people were very happy with you. So at some point we started recruiting people and I had lots of advocates of Charlotte. I had not met you yet, so I had to meet you afterwards. We had Reinder Hakma coming, uh, arguing, saying how good you are. Uh, Maike Hulema, who had worked with you and the, and the experiment that you had done with her. People from Philips, from Thomas Visser and so on. So yes, we met and was, I was very keen to have the chance to work with you. So you are a neuroscientist, so that's a bit of a long haul, but actually it turns out you had a keen interest in UX and you, you knew what you were getting into when you started. I was always having a bit the, the worry, did you know? But yes, you did. And I found out now what your connections were today, so okay. So um, you, you started, your, your first, uh, your project was about uh, trying to understand what sleep feedback does. So people monitor their sleep quality with lots of tracking devices that are out in the commerce today. And some of them are completely fake data that show to people. Some of them show good data, perhaps, but people that do not understand it. You get some information about what happens when you were deep asleep or not deep asleep, and people don't know what to do, it, to do with it. So we were wondering, you know, what does this do to people? So that was your first study, and you found that, thankfully, it doesn't do that much. That's bad, but people are quite aware of being monitored. And then we started thinking, oh, perhaps it could be interesting to manipulate what data we give to people. Maybe there's a placebo effect by telling people they sleep better and things like that. We're starting to think, what happens if you tell people different information? And that was, you set up a very interesting experiment there. Uh, unfortunately, the, the technology that you needed wasn't delivered because of resource problems, but we're still at it and we're still trying to get these results. I think it will be nice results. Uh, when they come, but we have to wait and see. Now, in your project, you showed a lot of professionalism and a lot of commitment to quality. But we also had some funny moments when you were trying to find out who was actually your coach. And we were sitting there with three people, so you never knew whom to listen to. Me, as a TUE professor, Sebastian Overeem, as the medical expert, who really knows what, the, what is happening with sleep, or Einder Hakma, who was your Philips supervisor. Now, we were all convinced we were telling you the same thing. It was very interesting how you pointed out that we were actually saying three different things you should do every time. 
So, okay, apart from the comic, I mean, for us it was a, a bit funny, for you maybe a bit frustrating, but uh, yeah, you, you sorted it out and you were quite good in telling us, setting us in one line, and I think that was also a part of the professionalism and talent that you have. So, of course, I felt that sometimes you worried a bit too much, but I think that was very important to get the team uh, aligned. Um, soon, you started having some worries. Panos, are you asking me to do too much science? Uh, I came here to be a designer. And you wanted to do more design, so you wanted to leave this project behind you and get more into design. And then I discovered the new Charlotte, who is a UX designer and who could work very effectively in the design cases. And together with people from the next generation, you did some really cool work uh, with Florence and uh, uh, who else was it? Um, Oh yeah, Banas, yes. It was the Marktplatz and L project. So you get us known with sort of very uh, a good, uh, very well-known brand names in UX and you impress them with the work. So I think you have a problem now. You have two good talents and you have to perhaps choose. Are you going to be a researcher? Are you going to be a UX designer? Perhaps you find a way to combine them. I've heard you got a job. I don't know yet as what, but I'm really curious to see how you will solve this problem, because I think you're really good at both. So good luck with it, and congratulations with your diploma. The next candidate is Stefan Manojlovic, and he will be addressed by Dr. Javed Khan. Dear Stefan, congratulations. Cestitamo. I hope, I hope Google Translator got it right, um, and I haven't offended your family. Uh, for your final project, you worked uh, in uh, Bella Bit, uh, a company based in San Francisco and Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, where you come from. Bellabit creates uh, wearable computing products for women to easily track their overall health and wellness. And as part of uh, their software division, you specifically worked on designing and developing a chatbot, uh, which you named Airy. And simply put, a chatbot is a virtual instant, instant messaging friend of uh, Bellabit users that helps them uh, stay motivated to keep a healthy lifestyle. Now, a design challenge of such virtual agents is how to make them feel real. In other words, how do we design personality into a software product? And this was the challenge that you recognized early on and enthusiastically worked on it till the very last week that you had to deliver your thesis. So you conducted several studies through which you carefully crafted the personality of AIRI into a very successful product that is already used by tens of thousands of women in the United States. The quantity and quality of your work was impressive, but what impressed me, me the most was your drive and determination to get answers to the main question you had set out from the start of the project. Namely, do your users recognize the personality traits you carefully designed, and would they be persuaded by a chatbot that matches their personality. The results are very promising, and your research has the potential to also be published uh, in an academic venue. You were so motivated to get an answer to that question uh, that you went on and took a risk in not finishing in time your thesis uh, to actually complete the final study you had planned. Now, I'm very glad that uh, you were able to make it, but uh, I can now confess that uh, this decision stressed me uh, out at that time. <laughs> I would like to commend that passion that you have for research and the skills you have to plan. Well, maybe planning is, is still a work in progress. Execute and translate research findings into products and ask you to keep those qualities in whatever you decide to do in the future. Again, congratulations for this achievement. May I invite Ms. Eva Palaiolog and 
She will be addressed by Dr. Matthias Funk. Dear Eva, congratulations to your degree and for being done with your project. This was quite an achievement. I'm very happy for you that you made it. If I would have to name a quality or two of yours, I would say you really care about the details in a very persistent way. And you take user research very seriously. And sometimes you even fight for it. We'll come to that later. Do you remember when you interviewed me for a design project almost exactly four years ago? Yes. And 10 days, something like that? Yes. I still remember that you did a fantastic interview. So. You worked on your final Uzi project not with, but for Mirabeau, that one. To be more precise, this was the first Uzi project that I coached that had to fit into billable hours. And it took a fraction of the usual duration to come to extensive results. So you, you started basically in summer, and then uh, it happened. Impressive. Now, who were these hours built to? NDA. So we can't really say. But what we can say is that it, it was a large Dutch airline. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted you to revamp their boarding procedure. And I must say, I learned a lot about the details of that. So when I flew last week, that was very exciting to look behind the scenes. So it was a very interesting project with a lot of impact. Really nice. You had quite a job to do, not just in terms of responsibility, but simply working the enterprise lean methodology, water scrum development life cycles with developers, iOS app design guidelines, reporting everything, digging through stakeholder briefings, convincing, fighting for user research methodology and approval meetings. That was indeed a job for you. You also worked on visualization approaches and information architecture, and I think you had a very convincing ideas that would make a big difference in how we step onto planes in the future. Your job is very well done, and yet there are challenges left for you to continue working at Mirabeau. Well, I guess they really need you now. And uh, coming to the end, I would like to congratulate you again and wish you all the best for a wonderful future. Just, just to be sure, yeah. it's beautiful, right? <laughs> it's, it's, okay, here you go. Yeah, thanks a lot. The next candidate is Atar Rahman, and he will be addressed by Dr. Javed Khan. Dear Atar, congratulations. Mubarak Ho. Thank you. For your final project, you worked in Backbase, a company based in Amsterdam. Backbase is developing a digital applications that banks use to serve their customers in mobile and other computing devices. The product you worked on is already used by hundreds of millions of people. Uh, and I think several uh, of us in this room are uh, already your users, without knowing. Although Backbase has a lot of, of users to further develop their product, they needed to introduce a more structured approach in documenting their user tests. This is something you identified and proactively proposed to work on as your final project. So after reviewing all possible ways to document user testing, and testing yourself several designs of such documents with, with several stakeholders in the company, you achieved to introduce a new document template that satisfies the goal you initially set out to solve and is already used uh, now in the company. Your good social skills, coupled with an academically research-oriented mindset and approach, was very much welcomed uh, in the company. You showed dedication, worked uh, beyond what was expected from you 
to achieve uh, the quality and quantity you had envisioned and was able to achieve a high level result despite the limited time uh, you had. You have a computer science background, but I early on observed your enthusiasm and motivation in working in the field of design and human computer interaction. And I strongly believe that enthousi that enthusiasm coupled with your scientific approach are undoubtedly strong foundations for a bright future. Congratulations again with this achievement. The next candidate is Studo Vakaretu, and he will be addressed by Professor Panos Markopoulos. Hi, Tudor. So, you came to us from Romania with a solid computer science background and some substantial experience already in software development. And apparently you liked Eindhoven because you had been here before as an exchange student. And what we really saw in your application when you started, when you asked to work here, is how keen you were to work for people and to understand and to address uh, people's needs. So as an Uzi trainee, you performed very well throughout. From the beginning, it was very clear to us how serious you are and what a good team, team player and reliable you are. So I first got to work more with you last year, about this time. I was facing a challenge. I had a paper accepted for a journal together with Eri Sauda, our alumni, a very good journal, it's the most prestigious in our field, but they would not print it unless they had another user test, which, by the way, I didn't want to do, but okay, we also didn't have time to do. So then I broadcast the request for help from all the Uzis and I said, please, somebody help me. And then you stepped forward, you and Jan also, and you actually did a perfect uh, evaluation. You wrote the section of the report, we sent it, and it just went through without a single comment back. Not a comma, nothing should be changed. So you already showed some knack and some interest for research at the time. So of course I got very interested when you said afterwards you were applying for PhD positions elsewhere, and I had to write the reference letter. I said, oh, yeah. OK, interesting. So, but anyway, then you started, you expressed interest for the research, for the valorization project we were doing for the EIT labs. And the goal of your project was to motivate people with uh, some mild cognitive impairment to keep doing some mental training exercises. So the point is, other people, because this was a collaborative project with insurance companies, with Philips, with, uh, interaction designers from Sweden, uh, psychologists from Munich, but uh, our job was to keep them engaged, to keep the adherence high. And it was very nice to work with you and with Marta Kasmarsik, if she's here, uh, and you were setting your own targets, we were having a nice chat, and you would pursue them independently, and the things were going well. Unfortunately, sometimes things don't go so easily, and the collaboration started hampering. So at some point, we were supposed to make something but not allowed to integrate with proprietary code. You were not even allowed to look at it. Uh, Jan proposed another solution, but they wouldn't sort of do their part. So in the end, what you have to do, you make something that you can test our solution locally and go a bit aside. But you still managed to deliver everything that the partners needed to be delivered on time with very high standard and also to avoid doing just contrived work at our side. So I'm very happy uh, with this uh, um, collaboration. And I should say that although I prefer things to be always rosy and smooth, it's, you find what your team uh, members, your, your pals are worth when the going gets tough. So you really did very well there, and I really admired how you and Marta closed ranks and pushed through a very challenging situation. So, of course, I look forward to demonstrating that this is a, the perfect solution that will keep people training. That still has to happen. Uh, but I'm very glad we get to work more together now in the Advanced Sleep Monitoring Program. For now, I want to congratulate you on your diploma, to thank you for your efforts so, so long, and to wish you, of course, the best for the next stage uh, of your career. And now I turn to our chair. Do I deliver now or the diploma? Yes? Yes, I do. Okay. 
So my congratulations. It's a deal. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'd like to invite Marjolein Wintermans, the next candidate, and she will be addressed by Dr. Lu Yen. Dear Marjolein, your UC, UC final project client is actually Rens Brankat, who cannot be here today. So he sent me a few words, I added some of my own, and here it comes. You first met Rens when you were doing your master graduation project at Industry Design. The project is about designing for dementia. And Rens got to know you as a designer who is really passionate about designing for our senior citizens. You're really going, waiting to design something to make them not benefit from the functionality from the design, but also to empower them to be full part of our society and to have independent living. Um, this work in your master project was later published this year at Design Management Conference in Hong Kong. We met for the first time when Renz and I were looking for a PhD candidate who is going to make impactful designs for our senior citizens. We were very happy we were able to make a deal with the UC program that Mayu Line is allowed to do her final UC project with us and then continue her PhD. Um, the UC final project was together with the European project InSafe. It is about promoting the usage of smartphones to support the elderly people to be more social and physical active. So in this project, uh, my online needs to work closely with Go Life Phone, the technology partners, and also the European consortium team. And my online also conducted user research studies at locations near Eindhoven with the senior communities. And so you conducted, actually, you made your own cultural probes, you collected diaries, and you had workshops with them, and you also proposed a new design direction, which is at the moment programming by the technical partners and hopefully to be tested at later this year. The name of the app is uh, Omages. There's some meaning, I think all the Dutch people know what does it mean, but I don't know exactly, but it probably means to get out, to be more energetic, to have a lot of exercise outside and to, uh, you know, to be fit and socially active. Um, so this is all about work. I'm done with it. There's something also, there's another side of my line. She's a very joyful person to work with and she's very social active. She has a lot of friends and she takes a lot of joyful and adventurous activities. I heard a lot of story about Yard Club, Demos, and of course, Erik. Is Erik here? Not yet. Oh yeah, hi. <laughs> and, and Renz and I had also an opportunity to learn a little bit more about my online uh, during our uh, outside the work context, uh, context. So you made the first trip with uh, Renz after joining the, the department as a, as a PhD candidate, I think, for, uh, for a trip to Sweden. And then we made a trip together to Hong Kong and also in the summer school in, in Hangzhou. That was really fun. So I'm, I'm going to save you from the details about pancakes, hamburgers, <laughs> cocktails, karaoke. Okay, that's it. So that's really a lot for a UC graduation project. Very well done. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to not say goodbye, but to say welcome on board for the next three years to come, to join us in the research team to work on design for aging. Congratulations with your UC de degree and congratulations to the family and friends. Thank you. Then our next candidate is Jan de Wit, and he will be addressed by Professor Markopoulos.
Hello, Jan. It's now a couple of years ago when we were looking for someone to join a project we had uh, funded by a pharmaceutical company to develop an app to, de to monitor the symptoms of narcolepsy patients. And I should explain what narcolepsy is about. It's a, kind of a very rare sleep disorder where sleep-wake patterns are completely disturbed. People can fall at, in the middle of the day, they can fall asleep, they can collapse down, they can have depressions. They have very varied and severe symptoms. And the main thing is that the symptoms are very different between people. So currently, doctors meet them every six months. They ask them what they remember about the six months and then they base their treatment on that. So what we were trying to do was make an app that would help them record this and recall this uh, much better. So I remember when we interviewed you together with Nikos, who I see in the audience also too, and we were really trying to grill you for your technical skills, if you were gonna be able to do it. At some point I stopped understanding what you guys were talking about. So I, sh I was sure it was going well. And then we asked you why you wanted to do this. And that's where some real passion came through for trying to do something that would help people and that would make a difference. And you had already tried to develop health apps and that was already very interesting, but then you realized how difficult it was to address user needs and you realized what you were missing. So we have very rarely heard such a clear motivation for why you should want to follow the PDN program we have. So of course we were very keen to get you and you were one of the first people we hired in a new kind of way the, the Jan model, let's say, like start not with a cohort, but just because we had a project that needed you. And the second one, Charlotte already, so I mentioned her before. So it was an experiment already, and you quickly impressed us also how smoothly you managed to work across generations, sometimes with one generation, sometimes with another. So that was very, very nice. Um, your work was great, it was fun to work with you. I was very proud certain moments when I heard you present at the Sleep Symposium uh, in, in Kemperhag in Hesse, uh, when you presented there, it was really, really cool. Um, you were recruited as a Sikai ambassador uh, by Regina Bernhaupt, so, so that was nice. Also Stefan, uh, so, so you made our Uzi program more known, so uh, it's clear you were spreading the word about what we do at TV. Um, I think the, the real reason we hired you is your driving skills. I mean, this, we, we needed a driver. We needed a driver first for the video prototypes that were created uh, for new technologies. The Barga definitely needed one that looked like a seat. And uh, yeah, you, you, that's, that's a role you played very well. So we were very proud for this. So now we know how driverless cars look like. So we have been very satisfied with the projects. Now our ambitions with the narcolepsy project are high. Of course, we want to help doctors, but of course, we will look further. How can we collect data that will help understand the disease better? So that is, uh, and how to treat it better. Now you started with a clean design orientation when we hired you, but slowly you developed some interest in research. And uh, already I mentioned the general pa ad paper adventure uh, that you had with Tudor. Um, that was an interesting thing. Uh, I think also what you did uh, with narcolepsy that is also uh, publishable. And then you chose for Tilburg. That's a very nice place, very good people. You do really exciting work there. And I really, really look forward to the results of that work where robots will act as second language tutors. Um, I think that you will reach new levels in professional and personal development. That's all for me now. For now, I would like to thank you for your efforts these years, to congratulate you on your achievements. And I look forward to the next. So, congratulations. So last but not least, uh, next candidate is Ruud Zandbergen, and he will be addressed by Dr. Jun Hu. And this is the last one of, of this year, so. But the same weight, it's not uh, lighter. Um, Ruud, uh, while I was pre pre preparing this speech today, I. I always try to make this speech less kind of serious, make it more fun uh, to hear to. Um, it was very difficult for me because I found nothing really 
funny about you. Um, I had to say that uh, um, supervising your final UC project was a very much a lean back experience. Uh, we did have a lot of, uh, we didn't have a lot of meetings, we had a few. Um, but all of these meetings were so informative and effective, I don't remember anything funny. <laughs> it was an easy, well, was an easy job for me. Um, Now I have to do the same boring speech as just Panos did. Um, when you started your UC project uh, at uh, McCoy, uh, you were already, uh, I think, hired at that moment as a normal employee, as a UX consultant. That's a, a dream job for a lot of UC uh, graduates. Uh, it was great for us because we don't have to pay you anymore. Uh, it was also great for you because usually the comp companies pay better. Was it true? True. Okay. <laughs> but there was a problem. Uh, McCoy found that you yourself uh, are very usable. Your usability was very high at the company. So we, we were engaging in a lot of projects and a lot of things. Um, and it's not okay for a UC program uh, to kind of conclude your project, because we need some focus. Um, the company was very happy with you. Uh, it was a good thing, but we also need to, a good graduation project, although you have, you have been doing a lot of projects. So I, I remember at Sonomama I discussed, I don't need a lot of projects, I just need one project that demonstrates that you are a good UC uh, graduate. So there was a problem. Um, but I think uh, both of us are uh, good at solving problems. Uh, it took us only one meeting uh, to decide on what could be uh, used to bring all those things that you do, most of those things you do uh, in the company, with a focus. And that is designing with sub Fiori. Um, many of you might wonder what sub Fiori is, I never heard of it before I coach uh, Root. Uh, it is actually a set of design styles or frameworks for their user interfaces. So designers should make use of it. Just like uh, Google's material design for Google Apps, for those that you know Google material design. In uh, several uh, projects, you came up with a set of design guidelines to guide the user, uh, user interface designers in their practice with this framework. And these guidelines are further evaluated in one of the projects, um, but it was not presented in the report. I was a bit disappointed. Uh, hopefully these uh, guidelines will become a living document, as you say in your report, and that will be uh, constantly updated and improved during uh, the practice of the designers at McCoy. As far as I know that you will continue at the McCoy as a UX console um, tent, right? With, with a higher salary there. <laughs> with your skills and experiences and mostly professionalism. That's what I, the word I was looking for um, next to nothing funny about you. That's called professionalism. McCoy is lucky having you. Congratulations. And now it's a pleasure for me to announce a special guest, the Rector Monificus of TU Eindhoven, Professor Frank Bayens, who will address the 4,000th PDN graduate. Yeah. I just wanted to keep that a little bit as a surprise, and the surprise has been taken away already. First of all, I would like to congratulate you. Congratulate you with the, with the degree that was just handed out to you. Uh, 18, if I, if I have it uh, correctly. So we've now passed uh, the 4,000 number, which is really impressive because it's a fairly young degree. And uh, in particular at this university, we always welcome the, uh, the, the Padang uh, degree. Um, it's, um, 
Because the, the degree that was just uh, handed out to you is something that uh, originated from the interaction that we have with the uh, surrounding industry. Uh, they really appreciate the fact that next to having more scientifically driven engineers, they also wanted to have more design driven uh, engineers. And they also wanted that to be uh, a graduate degree. So something that you do, basically do after your master's. So you really can, can put this at a higher level. And in that way, it's a professional doctorate uh, degree. Um, so we really see that this interaction with the industry uh, plays a very significant role in, in what you've done. And I think all of you have at least worked one year, uh, at least a very close collaboration with the industry, if not uh, within the industry. So it really um, is, a, is something that uh, is an answer to, uh, to the question that we get from the industry. And actually, I think today we even see an increase in this uh, question because they increasingly want to have something that is relatively with a short turnover. And so quick action, quick answers, and I think you're well, you're well equipped to do that. Uh, what's also unique to see, if you look at these uh, people that were just given a degree, more than 50% is female. It's really unique. If you go walk around to this university, you will find it very difficult to find a program that has more than 50% female students. So we really appreciate that you've taken this opportunity and to, uh, to participate in, a, in a, an environment which, at least today, is still pretty much male-dominated. I wish that our university would be like what I see today. 50% male, 50% female. That would be wonderful. Um, the fact that we now hand out uh, the 4,000th uh, uh, degree is largely due to one of my predecessors, Professor Stan Ackermans, when he was uh, rector of this university. He very much advocated uh, this uh, program. And he also became the first scientific director of what at that time was called uh, the, this, this program. And, and, and unfortunately, he, he passed away in 95. And as a result of that, we, we labeled the institute the Stan Ackermans Institute. Later on, because it became part of the, uh, today, the 4TU, at that time still the 3TU Federation, it is now the, uh, uh, the 4TU School for Technological Design, the Stan Ackermans uh, Institute. Um, it's really something that is very vivid here in Eindhoven. If you look at the 4,000 degrees that we've handed out, I will give you the exact numbers. 559 were handed out in Twente, 731 in Delft, so 2,710 here in Eindhoven. So it shows you how important we feel that this degree is and also how close the interaction of this program is with the surrounding industry. Uh, after all, we're number one in the world as it goes with the number of publications that we have together with the industry. It shows that this university is really deeply rooted uh, in the environment that we have here, and I think you're a beautiful example uh, of that. Probably many of you have found a job in that industry as well. So I hope that you're going to stay and, and really enjoy uh, what you're doing here. Um, so today, one of you was number 4,000. And the question is who? <laughs> now, we hand out this uh, degree in alphabetical order, as you've seen. So based on that list, it's very easy to then identify number 4,000. And that was Mr. Tudor Pasaretu. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> So I hope you appreciate that I symbolically hand it over to each and all of you. Uh, I also would like to thank the supervisors, because at the end of the day, you play a very impo important role in supervising uh, these people, these young people uh, as well. Uh, much of what we, ha what we see happening is really interaction between 
uh, well, the candidate, not really a student anymore, I would say, but a candidate uh, together with the supervisors. I would like to congratulate you as well with the wonderful 18 degrees. Thank you very much. So thank you again, Professor Bayens, and congratulations again to you, Tudor, and of course also to all your colleagues, because if it weren't for them, you would not be the 4,000th. So. <laughs> We now proceed to the last part of the ceremony. Uh, dear graduates, first of all, congratulations with your diploma. From now on, you are entitled to use a degree of professional doctorate in engineering or PDN. But please note that the scientific degree of PDN involves rights as well as duties. As a holder of this degree, you are committed to the standards of scientific integrity trustworthiness, intellectual honesty, openness, and independence. These standards are described in more detail in the Netherlands Code of Conduct for Academic Practice and in the Eindhoven Code derived from it. You have also duties to society. You must be clear about the boundaries of your own expertise, and you must communicate honestly and independently about the results of your work, including potential risks associated with it. You are committed to the ethical code for research and design involving human subjects and animals. We wish you all the best and a promising career in industry. High-tech companies are in great need of technological designers with the skills you have acquired over the last two years. Hence, the opportunities that lay ahead will be endless. To conclude this ceremony, there are a few directions for the closure of this ceremony. First of all, the graduates will line up to be congratulated by the supervisors. Then the supervisors and graduates will leave the room at the side of the auditorium to have their picture taken. Once the graduate and the supervisors have left the Blaue Zaal, the audience may exit the Blaue Zaal at the Voorhof site. In the Voorhof, drinks are being served, and once we have had our picture taken, we will join you in the festivities. I close the ceremony. <laughs>